Hi everyone, this is Mr. San, your bio coach. Before we start, please subscribe my channel and don't forget to click the bell button to get more updates on KSSM Biology SPM tips to score A+. Plus. Okay, this is going to be one of the most important tips for SPM KSSM syllabus biology exam. You cannot miss this chapter that is reproduction system in humans from form 4. It has high chances for it to come out for Kirtas Dua, section A, B or C. Ah, remember that. In this video, I am going to do a crash course on the understanding of the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system and how pregnancy starts and ends. Okay, let's start with female reproductive system first. So when you look at female reproductive system, this is the diagram that I have, um, that I've drawn, okay. Now you can see that this is the female reproductive system and it has all the labelings here, okay. I'm pretty sure that you guys have already gone through when you guys have learned this in the same thing that you guys learned in form 1. So it all starts with the vagina here, okay. And then there is a structure here which is known as the cervix. And after that, we have the uterus. This is the uterus. Okay, not the red color, but the black color wall is known as the uterus. And after that, it, you have this structure, which is known as the fallopian tube. And you have a pair of fallopian tube and which these fallopian tube are connected to a very important organ, which we call that as the ovary. Okay, okay. Now, the other thing that you guys will need to know. Now, this is something that you guys didn't learn in PT1 or during PT3, this is what you call as the endometrium tissue, which grows on the uterus wall. The endometrium tissue will get renewed every time that the female goes through the menstruation cycle. Okay, so we will look into that in a short while. What it, what it, what does it do, and uh, what's, uh, how is it maintained, and how is it renewed? over the period of time through the menstruation cycle. Okay, now, later we will look into these little things that we have inside the uterus here. Okay, this is after the fertilization process. Okay, the uh, zygote will turn into an embryo and an embryo will turn into a fetus and which is the fetus will be connected to the mother's placenta. We will look into that when we discuss about pregnancy in female reproductive system okay now labeling i'm done with the labeling okay so make sure you guys know this term which is known as the endometrium tissue and the endometrium tissue here it will get thicker and thicker day by day from the menstruation period okay until it reaches a desired thickness uh, which is somewhere around day 14 of the menstruation cycle after that it will be maintained until it reaches day 28 Okay, so let's look at the next thing about the female reproductive system, which is the menstruation cycle. Okay, now when you look at the menstruation cycle, it starts from day one and it lasts approximately about 28 days. Okay, it starts from day one and it lasts approximately about 28 days. Okay, let me put all the hormones aside because I don't want to confuse you guys first. I'll come back to the hormones and how the endocrine system or the hormones are regulating your menstruation cycle. So it all starts from day one, okay, and it lasts at least about 28 days. It depends on different people, on different individual. Uh, they have different uh, timeline of a menstruation cycle. Some they will have a 30 days menstruation cycle. Some they will have about 40 days of menstruation cycle. Some even more, or some even less than 28 days. As long the menstruation cycle, you know, it, it goes through a proper uh, regulation. Okay, it happens every 28 days or it happens every 30 days or 31 days. Okay, plus minus one or two days is okay. But if she's getting very irregular, menstruation cycle okay sometimes she gets 
uh, in within 14 days she gets a menstruation cycle and then sometimes she have to wait about two or three months and then she gets a menstruation cycle this is irregular irregular pattern of menstruation cycle that means something is wrong with her endocrine system that regulates her menstruation cycle and that she has to seek for medical treatment okay so when we look at the standard menstruation cycle which it says from day one until day 28 is the standard menstruation cycle day one until day six is known as the menstruation period okay day one until day six is known as the menstruation period now what happens during this menstruation period is basically a new endometrium tissue will start to grow you can see that the new endometrium tissue start to grow okay the the folded red color structure that i've drawn here is the new endometrium tissue and every day it's getting developed and it get it's it grows and it will be filled with large network of blood capillaries okay so when the new one grows what happens is that the old one will get pushed out for example let's say this is the old one so when the new one grows the old one will get pushed out Okay, and when the old one get pushed out, that's the time when the female will experience the menstruation period where the old endometrium tissue is discharged out from the vagina. So the endometrium tissue is made up of some epithelial cells and also it is filled with large network of blood capillaries. So this will be uh, a, a, a period when they have a lot of blood lost from their system so and also their blood circulatory system is considered to be uh, open and so they have to be very careful during this time and so that's why they have to clean themselves often and they have to wear a sanitary pad in order for them to protect themselves from any kind of diseases okay all right so that is day one until day six please remember when the new endometrium tissue grows the old endometrium tissue will start to be pushed out okay now let's look at from day six until day 12 day six until day 12 is basically a stage which you call that as the development of endometrium tissue period so what happens during the development of endometrium tissue period so from day 6 until day 12 you can see that the endometrium tissue is getting well developed it is filled with large network of blood capillary until it reach a desired thickness okay so you can see until day 12 it's already getting uh, to the right thickness and it is filled with large network of blood capillaries okay so it's well developed right now so that is day 6 until day 12 and then after that you got day 12 until day 16 what happens during these days here yeah? day 12 until day 16 is known as the fertile period okay so what do you mean by fertile period during this time there is something called ovulation happens now what do you mean by ovulation day ovulation day is the time when the egg containing the secondary oocyte will be released into the fallopian tube now i know that what you are thinking here now you'll be you'll be my you'll be like uh, what did he say like egg containing secondary oocyte now isn't it supposed to be ovum now that i know you guys have learned in pt1 that you say that the ovum will be released from the ovary into the fallopian tube during the ovulation day now i know that that is pt1 okay that is pt3 okay you don't have to bring that fact over here because that will be a wrong thing you have to say that during ovulation the egg containing secondary oocyte cell will be released into the fallopian tube so the blue color is the secondary oocyte and it will be protected well by the egg all right the egg is made up of follicle tissue later I will explain to you guys about that but please remember during ovulation you are not releasing ovum yet you are releasing egg containing secondary oocyte so that is ovulation day so that is happening somewhere around day 14 remember that okay this is the time that we call that as fertile period okay so from day 16 until day 28 what happens uh, the endometrium tissue as you can see that the endometrium tissue is is well maintained okay the thickness of the endometrium tissue is well maintained so we, that means what happens here there is a particular hormone that will be uh, that will be secreted 
by your ovary to help to maintain the thickness of the endometrium tissue the well-being of the endometrium tissue the reason is because you see it from day 16 until day 28 okay you can see that's a that's a long period of time it's almost about two weeks and so females will be moving they will be running they will be rolling they will be doing all kind of stuffs so they, there is high chances for the endometrium tissue get damaged there so in order for the uh, uh, well-being of the endometrium tissue there is one hormone which is known as the hormone progesterone will be secreted by the ovary which it will be helping to maintain the thickness of the endometrium tissue whenever there is a damage it will help to repair back the endometrium tissue now nearing day 28 okay nearing day 28 as you guys can see here all right nearing day 28 you guys can see that the endometrium tissue is getting deteriorated the reason is because nearing day 28 you can see that the progesterone level will start to drop and which it causes there is no longer that hormone uh, helping to maintain the endometrium tissue so it is starting to get uh, bad it is starting to get to break and uh, deteriorated so day 28 that's the last day okay that's the last day and then after that what happens day one starts back again the new endometrium tissue start to grow back and the old endometrium tissue will be pushed out and the cycle starts back again this is the menstruation cycle that you guys will need to know a simple way to explain about the menstruation cycle and i will be coming back uh, uh, in regards to the endocrine system okay now what else you guys will need to understand about the uh, male and the female reproductive system we will first we'll look into the female reproductive system first then I will come into male reproductive system okay so when we look at this part here okay now uh, what what is this this is on the a timeline of a female and how and when does the gamete production starts when her puberty starts okay and when her menstruation cycle starts okay so we're going to look at that okay so every man and woman they're going to start from the formation of zygote okay this is where all begins all right when the sperm cells nucleus and the ovum cells nucleus fuses it forms a zygote through fertilization process the zygote will go through mitosis process to form embryo and embryo will go through growth and development to produce a fetus during the fetus stage during the fetus stage of a female the female already started the gamete production so gamete production in female already started during the fetus stage itself and then after that uh, it will pause it will pause the process and then it will become it will be born to be a baby girl and then after many years you know 11 years to 12 years then she reaches puberty okay then this is when the menstruation cycle starts and she will resume back her gamete production so there is a long pause after uh, the first gamete production starts then she will again she will start again the production of gamete and through menstruation cycle uh, after the she reaches a puberty and then she becomes a woman and she copulate to become a pregnant and then finally when she's old she goes through menopause stage so we want to understand the gamete production in much more in detail okay gamete production in a female or gametogenesis in female it is known as oogenesis process okay oogenesis process okay this is an acronym that i have to help you to memorize how oogenesis process actually works so when you look at popso i call it popso so this is this is an easy way for you guys to remember how oogenesis process happens so if they ask you a question describe oogenesis process okay or explain oogenesis process and you should be able to explain or describe with without any flaw you must make sure your uh, the names of the cell and the order of the cells and the process that is involved from uh, changing from one type of a cell to another type of cell is quite very important for you guys to take note of all this so popso is the way for you guys to remember oogenesis process
a process to produce the gamete cells. So when you look at the primordial germ cells, this is the first cell that, uh, that you, it involves in the production of ovum or in sperm, uh, sorry, in uh, oogenesis process. So primordial germ cells, you can find that in the ovary of the female. Now, uh, the primordial germ cells uh, is developed while uh, the female is in the fetus stage before birth. Okay, all this happens before birth. In the ovary of the fetus, there is primordial germ cells and these primordial germ cells are diploid in number. The chromosome number is diploid in number and these primordial germ cells will go through mitosis process to produce something called the oogonia. Okay, in plural, it is known as oogonia. They will produce many oogonia and each of these oogonium, it will go through growth and development process. Uh, before and even after birth, they will go through growth and development process uh, for them to produce the primary oocyte. Okay, all right. Okay, now listen to me carefully. Primordial germ cells will go through mitosis process to produce oogonia, many oogonia. Each of the oogonium will go through growth and development process for them to produce primary oocyte. Okay, now during the infant or childhood stage, now she, now the baby is already born, now it's infant or during the childhood stage, what happens is that the primary oocyte, the primary oocyte, now it will go through meiosis 1. They will start the meiosis 1 cell division. Okay, they will start meiosis 1. However, what happens is that the moment it starts meiosis 1, okay, uh, when it reaches the prophase 1 stage, the cell becomes dormant. The process of meiosis uh, is passed at prophase 1. The cell becomes dormant. And it becomes dormant for a long period of time. Remember that. The, it becomes dormant for a long period of time. Okay, that means the cell is passed at prophase 1 stage for a long period of time. How long? Until the girl reaches puberty. That means at the age of 11 or 12, years old when the girl is reaching puberty uh, then the meiosis one resumes back again and it produces two important cells here now listen to me carefully one of the cell is going to be very small and which we call that as the polar body cell and the other cell is going to be a large cell which we call that as the secondary oocyte now what happens to the polar body cells? Polar body cells are useless cells. They are not going to be used in the fertilization process, not involved in the reproduction at all. So polar body cells will divide by meiosis 2 and they produce two more polar body cells and that's it. They are useless cells, not going to be used in uh, reproduction at all. Now the secondary oocyte that was formed after the completion of meiosis 1, the large cell is known as the secondary oocyte. Now this is already a haploid number because you already complete the meiosis 1, the diploid number of primary oocyte will be dropped down to haploid number of secondary oocyte. Now the secondary oocyte here, the large cell, what does it do? Now it goes through meiosis 2. It goes through meiosis 2 but it's it's again, all right, it is paused at metaphase 2 this time. Okay, it becomes dormant at metaphase 2. And it doesn't it, it doesn't continue meiosis 2. Okay, so this is the secondary oocyte that you have. Now remember I told you during ovulation what it is released into the fallopian tube egg containing secondary oocyte. So this is the secondary oocyte that will get into the fallopian tube. Now it is not ovum yet. Okay, so this is the catch. All right, listen to me carefully. Now your secondary oocyte is already in the fallopian tube. Okay, it is packed in a ball of uh, tissue or, or follicle cells tissue. Okay, we call that as egg. Okay, the egg containing the secondary oocyte. It is released into the fallopian tube during the ovulation day. If let's say there is copulation between these partners and uh, sperm cells are ejaculated in the female reproductive system and the sperm cells are traveling all the way from the uh, vagina cervix up to the fallopian tube and the sperm cell uh, have found the egg containing secondary oocyte and then the, the first sperm cell, the winner, penetrates the egg okay the winner penetrates the egg all right and what happens here this is the most unique and uh, uh, amazing thing that we you have to acknowledge 
the moment the first sperm cells penetrates the egg meiosis 2 resumes meiosis 2 of the secondary oocyte resumes all right and it resumes and complete the meiosis 2 and this time also he will, it will produce a polar body cell and it will produce an ovum cell ah this is the ovum cell finally this is the ovum cell now remember after this only fertilization process takes place where the nucleus of the sperm cell and the nucleus of the ovum cell will fuse together and it will create the gamete oh, sorry it will create the zygote okay through fertilization process what is the function of the polar body cells no function pretty much why we have the polar body cells is to make sure that the female only produces one ovum cells at a time okay all right this is under the ma mammals uh, reproductive system mainly on human reproductive system that's what we are talking about here now when you compare that with male reproductive system now male reproductive system okay we all start with the zygote and then it will grow into an embryo by mitosis process and it will grow into a fetus and uh, the when does the sperm production start when is when is the game gamete production for the male starts it doesn't start during the fetus it doesn't start when he is a baby boy but when he is reaching puberty at the age of about 14 or 15 years old then his gamete production starts his gamete production starts at puberty unlike for female reproductive system the gamete production starts in the fetus level itself and it's quite unique and it's it's uh, complex female reproductive system is complex not complicated but it's complex and unique okay cool now this is what you guys will need to know under the uh, female reproductive system now we we'll, uh, we go a bit more in detail on the female reproductive system in regards of uh, uh, endocrine system how does the endocrine system helps in the menstruation cycle process and all other processes processes that happens in the female reproductive system okay now let's look at this timeline here okay so we have day one okay this is day one okay uh, day one of a menstruation cycle and uh, this is uh, day 28 okay this is day 28 now what happens when she reaches puberty okay or when she's having a menstruation cycle now i'm going to talk about when she reaches the first time she's going to reach puberty okay probably you guys have not l heard this in many of your lessons or whatever whoever that is teaching you they wouldn't wouldn't have taught you guys this but i would like to start this way and explain to you guys about how you guys reach puberty sorry how you girls reach puberty all right so now when you look at 28 day before her first menstruation period okay we're going to talk about the 28 days before her first menstruation period all right the first time she sees blood coming out from her reproductive system okay so 28 days before her first menstruation period we call that as day one okay during day one here there is no blood released out okay the reason is because they have this new endometrium tissue growing there is no endo old endometrium tissue to be pushed out so they have this new endometrium tissue growing now how all this happens now one day before day one what happens is that there is a part in your brain which is known as the hypothalamus it will release gonadotrophin releasing hormone now what is this gonadotrophin releasing hormone is all about now gonadotrophin releasing hormone it is secreted by the hypothalamus okay or we call that as gnrh here what does it do it stimulates the pituitary gland okay you know the pituitary gland it is the master of all endocrine gland okay now it stimulates the pituitary gland so it will secrete something called the follicle stimulating hormone or we call that as fsh now follicle stimulating hormone is secreted into the bloodstream and the bloodstream will transport this fsh hormone to all parts of the body now what happens here is that follicle stimulating hormone its target organ is ovary okay it is ovary it stimulates the ovary of the female reproductive system so it will secrete a hormone which is known as the oestrogen oestrogen is the most important hormone which is needed 
for the development of the endometrium tissue so you guys can see that the endometrium tissue is getting thicker and thicker and thicker day by day because uh, this is the graph that you guys will need to understand about no need to memorize on how to draw this graph because they're not going to ask you to draw this graph but they will ask you to memorize this now you can see on day one on the top of the graph list you got the follicle stimulating hormone okay and it is increasing day by day and you can also think, uh, see that the oestrogen hormone also increases day by day until it reaches the peak all right and which it causes every time the oestrogen concentration increases you can see the endometrium tissue is also getting developed well developed and it grows in thickness and it is filled with large number of blood capillaries this process happens until day 14 now during day 14 something else is happening now you can see before it reaches day 14 oestrogen is already start dropping down when it drops down to a certain significant level you can see there is another hormone start to be climbing up all right which is known as the lh now I'll let you guys know how it all happens now during day 14 here very important please listen to me carefully now there is something called the gonadotrophin releasing hormone right again your hypothalamus releases the gonadotrophin releasing hormone on day 14 which stimulates the pituitary gland to secrete a hormone which is known as the luteinizing hormone okay lh hormone now secretes the pituitary gland will now secrete luteinizing hormone which this luteinizing hormone what will it do it will cause the ovulation process which the egg containing secondary oocyte is released into the fallopian tube of the female reproductive system and then what happens what happens after that you listen to me carefully yeah so here the ovulation happens and then the luteinizing hormone also stimulates the ovary to secrete another hormone which is known as the progesterone now, i told you what is the progesterone doing to your endocrine uh, to your uh, uh, reproductive system which it helps to maintain the thickness of the endometrium tissue okay why it does that is because uh, it prepares the tissue for implantation process okay in case there is no implantation process happens and so day by day the progesterone will start to get dropped down you see when the lh increases the progesterone increases and then the progesterone will be maintained for some time and then after that you can see it drops down okay you can see it drops down all right you can see the hormones start to drop down and during the uh during that period you can see that the endometrium tissue is no longer been taken care of it will start to deteriorate and get um, i mean uh, gets damaged all right so, okay now from day one again all right day one again day 28 done on day one again you have the hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone which it will help to stimulate the pituitary gland to secrete follicle stimulating hormone so we're coming back to the same thing back again which the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the pituitary gland uh, sorry follicle stimulating hormone will stimulate the ovary to secrete oestrogen so you have oestrogen building the new endometrium tissue back so when you have new endometrium tissue the old endometrium tissue is pushed out when you have uh, to experience the first menstruation cycle i mean the first menstruation period now this cycle continues until the female reaches menopause stage which is going to be somewhere around 55 to 65 age years old depending on each individual okay so this is how you guys will need to understand about the female reproductive system okay in regards to menstruation cycle menstruation cycle and endocrine system uh, gametogenesis under female which is oogenesis process and yeah this graph is quite very important as well okay now then finally on female reproductive system you guys will need to know another important thing okay this one here okay which we call that as uh, follicle development okay follicle development all right so when we look at follicle development all this happens in the ovary okay uh, pretty much it's very easy for you guys to remember this if you guys ask me what is this all about 
this is how your egg is produced and this is where your hormones are being produced as well so you need to know what does your follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone is doing to your ovary so on your day one you know your pituitary gland will be secreting follicle stimulating hormone which is the target organ is going to be ovary and the target cell is going to be the follicle cells as you can see the word of the hormone is the follicle stimulating hormone follicle so it's the follicle cells that you guys can find in your ovary the follicle cells will form follicle tissue they will gather to make primary follicle tissue now the primary follicle tissue will have their gamete cells to be produced okay which is the uh, primary oocyte okay the primary oocyte will be stored within the primary follicle tissue the primary follicle tissue with the ever increasing follicle stimulating hormone will help to secrete oestrogen okay so primary follicle is the one that secretes oestrogen and also the primary follicle cells and tissue will develop into secondary follicle tissue the secondary follicle tissue day by day this is during the menstruation cycle so this is going to take from day 1 until day 14 so the secondary follicle will develop into graphene follicle now mark this spelling here you got a a g r a a f i a n so please don't do spelling mistake with this you're going to get mark cut okay marka kamu akan dipotong jika uh, uh, spelling kamu ada kesalahan okay kalau ejaan kamu ada kesalahan especially when it involves the scientific name you're going to be in big trouble guys so you have to be very careful on that so this is graphene follicle tissue graphene follicle tissue it will develop further to become a matured graphene follicle tissue okay now this is already nearing day 14 on day 14 you know there is for uh, luteinizing hormone will be secreted by the pituitary gland and this time here what you have is that you have this uh, your egg containing the secondary oocyte this is the secondary oocyte here okay this is the secondary oocyte here all right that means the primary follicle tissue uh, sorry the primary oocyte okay already resumed its meiosis process meiosis one and become secondary oocyte and secondary oocyte now it is it is ready to go through ovulation process so what happens is that you got your you got your um you got your egg containing secondary oocyte is released okay your egg containing secondary oocyte will be released all together will be released in one go all right all together all together it will be released in one go so please remember that okay i'm trying to bring this guy here okay oh there you go okay so that is the uh egg containing secondary oocyte okay this is the egg containing secondary oocyte let me all right so this is the egg containing secondary oocyte here it contains the uh, secondary oocyte cell so this is ovulation process is happening during day 14 now what happens to the remaining follicle tissue that you have what happened to the remaining matured graphene follicle tissue the remaining matured graphene follicle tissue it will magically um, this is just remarkable uh, it magically turns itself into another tissue which is known as the corpus luteum okay it magically turns into another structure which we call that as corpus luteum now what happens to corpus luteum corpus luteum is a structure that will help to secrete hormone progesterone <clears throat> okay it will help to secrete hormone progesterone and the process goes on until about day 26 27 the corpus luteum will start to degenerate okay so when it degenerates the progesterone level drops when the progesterone level drops you can see that uh, the uh, uh, cycle is going to change all right it go is going to get back to day one so uh, after that you got day one all the corpus luteum is gone and it will become follicle cells back again and the cycle continues this is what you call the follicle development make sure you guys know this 
okay now <clears throat> that's about the female reproductive system we will come back to female reproductive system uh, in terms of pregnancy okay I will cover pregnancy uh, in another video after this okay we will cover the male reproductive system okay we will cover the male reproductive system <clears throat> okay now this is the male reproductive system here okay under the male reproductive system if you look at uh, same thing you guys have learned in PT1 okay so uh, I would like to start with the, with the testicles all right so, so you got a pair of testes okay guys have a pair of testes and this pair of testes is the factory to produce the sperm cell okay and also it is the uh, endocrine gland which secretes hormone testosterone okay so this is a pair of testes that a, a, a male has the pair of testes is connected to this green color tube which is called that as sperm duct also can be called as the vas deferens okay sperm duct sperm duct can also be called as vas deferens remember that okay so you got a pair of sperm duct all right and you can see the sperm duct is cleverly hanging on the ureter of the urinary system reason is because the sperm duct is quite long and it does not want the uh, sperm duct to get tangled uh, when uh, a guy or a male moves a lot so when they run or when they are sleeping or when they are you know sitting they don't want their sperm duct to get coiled or tangled all right that that's going to be a problem for a male so that is why it's hanging nicely on the ureter and you can see this sperm duct is connected to two important structures one is the seminal vesicle you can see a pair of blue color thing that is that is attached to the uh, sperm duct and seminal vesicle is secreting um, nutrients for the sperm cells the sperm cell will need to survive itself outside the human body the male uh, body and so it needs some nutrients it needs, needs to be packed with some nutrients for it to use that for it to swim and to stay survive uh, to stay alive for at least about uh, three days outside the human body so it needs food so food wh where does it get nutrients from don't say food okay because food can <laughs> it's quite layman's term it's better for you guys to use nutrients okay so it g gives the glucose fats minerals ions vitamins and uh, 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 proteins amino acids enzymes all that which is needed for the sperm cells to swim and after that you, the sperm cells will go towards the prostate gland where the prostate gland will produce the fluid the fluid which is needed for the sperm cells to swim as well they need to have a liquid medium for them to swim so prostate gland will produce the fluid okay all right this is the main thing that you guys will need to understand now you can see the purple color here like a back or sac which is known as the scrotum now remember the testis is located outside your body huh? a little bit outside your body reason is because it wants to maintain the uh, temperature of, of the testicle two degrees Celsius lower than our body normal body temperature so the testicles works uh, best at a uh, lower two degrees Celsius lower temperature than the normal but uh, normal body temperature so this is something very important that you guys will need to remember as well it's a fun fact for you guys okay so um, then after that you see uh, this structure the sperm duct ends up at the prostate gland and then after that when there is a stimulation and there is a, a ejaculation process happening the sperm cells from these prostate gland and the sperm duct will start to be ejaculated out of the body through the urethra okay and through the penis yeah all right through this penis the penis will be erected and it will be hard and upon stimulation the sperm cell will be ejaculated out okay into the female reproductive system okay now please remember the urethra is also connected to the urinary bladder okay so it has two function one is to excrete out urine and another thing that they have uh, to uh, ejaculate the sperm cell okay so this is the male reproductive system please make sure you guys know that and also this is the structure of the testis okay this is the structure of the testis please remember okay this is the cross-section of a testis 
and the sperm duct and we look at this this is what you call inside the testes you got this tubule kind of structure highly folded to increase the surface area to the volume ratio this is what you call as the seminiferous tubules okay this is what you call as the seminiferous tubule each one of these are seminiferous tubules and in each of the seminiferous tubule you got this spermatogenesis process happens which is a uh, a process of which call that as gametogenesis process uh, a, pro a process of making the gamete cells of male reproductive system so which is basically sperm cell production starts in seminiferous tubule so it starts in seminiferous tubule and the sperm cell will be produced and after that it will move into the epididymis pro okay they will this part of the uh, testicles which is known as the epididymis in between the sperm duct and the testicles is known as the epididymis and the sperm cell will start to swim into the sperm duct or the vas deferens and since the seminiferous tubule is continuously producing the sperm cell so all the earlier produced sperm cells will be pushed along the epididymis and also the sperm duct until they reaches the seminal vesicle and also the prostate gland okay so please remember this is quite very important for you to remember the structure of the testes okay finally when we look at the uh, uh, process of spermatogenesis process now how do you remember spermatogenesis process i give you another acronym here psp triple s now i know you guys know i know uh, guys especially guys they like psp okay they they, they know what is psp yeah for those who don't know okay google it uh, you i think you guys should know what is that if you, in case you guys have forgotten psp okay a very important word psp triple s this is the acronym for you guys to use to uh, use to remember the spermatogenesis process all starts with the same cell that you guys find it in oogenesis process what is that it is the primordial germ cell so what does the primordial germ cells do now primordial germ cells you guys can find it in the seminiferous tubule right so the primordial germ cells will go through mitosis process to to produce many spermatogonia plural each spermatogonium then it will grow through go through growth and development process in order for them to produce a primary spermatocyte you can see that from the spermatogonium to primary spermatocyte you can see a lot of difference in terms of size because it grows and it develops into a structure which you call that as primary spermatocyte primary spermatocyte it will go through meiosis 1 okay and it will produce two secondary spermatocyte none of this is going to turn into polar body cells because you need maximum production of sperm cells all right they need to produce millions of sperm cells and sperm cell production happens every time every second so now you got the secondary spermatocyte which is already haploid in number all right after that this secondary spermatocyte will go through meiosis 2 process and completes the cell division of meiosis and they become spermatids okay so every spermatogonium here it will produce four spermatid at the end and each of the spermatid later it will go through differentiation process in order for them to produce the sperm cell Ta -da! so you got the sperm cell here okay they have to go through differentiation process from spermatid to sperm cell they have to go through differentiation process which they will be specialized into a particular cell which is known as the sperm cell they will develop the tail mid piece or the neck and also the head now let's look at the structure of the sperm cell here this is where i want to show you guys the cute little fella the sperm cell okay now you, you guys have the head okay this is the head okay the head contains the nucleus a haploid nucleus that carries the genetic information from the father dad okay so the nucleus here it's stored inside the head at the tip of the head you got the acrosome now this is something that you buku text ada okay you don't have it in your buku text textbook okay so in front here is known as the acrosome now, acrosome is made up of hydrolytic enzymes okay something like a lysosome but it is the same thing all right but we call that as acrosome it is located at the tip of your uh, sperm cells head okay now what happens is that during the uh, 
when it meets the egg containing secondary oocyte it needs to penetrate the egg so how do they use to penetrate they use the hydrolytic enzyme which is uh, stored inside the acrosome here okay now when you look at the head this is the head okay and after the head you guys have this uh, structure which is known as the mid piece or you can call that as neck which it is filled with large uh, quantities of mitochondrion so when the mitochondrion receives the nutrients it will uh, oxidize the glucose to produce energy in the form of atp and the atp energy is given to the tail and the tail will do the work which is swim the tail is also can be called as the flagella okay so in a liquid medium they will start to swim this is the structure of the sperm cell got it guys all right so this is the male reproductive system and i've already taught you the female reproductive system one of the thing that you guys will need to know that the testis helps to secrete hormone testosterone testosterone is a natural human um, male uh, steroid based hormone which helps in the secondary sexual development of male from the production of sperm cell to the um, growth of mustache and beard and hairy body muscular body all that happens this is what you call as the secondary sexual development that is conducted by the testosterone hormone secreted by the testis okay all right cool now what happens if let's say they go through a fertilization process okay that if let's say the male and the female the husband and the wife uh, decided to have a child okay they want to have a child okay so what is the process like okay let's look at that okay so they have to go through copulation so when do they have to go through copulation is basically during the fertile period okay during the fertile period they will go through for copulation process okay which uh, uh, please use that word that's the scientific word copulation don't use all the dot com dot my word at all huh? that is not going to help you guys and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, please take note on this. Yeah, fertile period. So, can I use sexual uh, intercourse? I can say yes, all right, but copulation sounds professional. So, please do a professional work. So, fertile period anything that uh, happens during the if let's say the copulation process happened during this period, fertile period. Okay, sperms can last for three days, ovum cell can last for one day. So, it is suggested to have copulation throughout this fertile period in order to increase the chances to get pregnant so the sperm cells will be ejaculated into the female reproductive system you guys can see this is the sperm cell don't bother this yet this is not born yet okay this is not formed yet imagine there is nothing here okay and so the sperm cells will start to swim and swim and swim and swim and swim okay they will be swimming 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 until they reach the fallopian tube okay and when it reaches the fallopian tube they seek for the egg okay they seek the egg they saw the egg tada i i saw the egg and then they want to do what okay let's look at here all right what does the sperm cell wants to do okay now look at this okay this is something very important okay so let me remove this first okay all right so what happens is that you can see that the acrosome already started doing its work and the first sperm cell already started penetrating the egg tissue which is the follicle tissue okay a ball of follicle tissue the moment the first sperm cell already penetrates into the ball of the follicle tissue all right you have the first sperm cells already uh, penetrated the ball of follicle tissue the follicle tissue will create a shield not allowing other sperm cells okay not allowing other sperm cells to penetrate through boom they won't penetrate this sperm cell boom they won't penetrate so only one sperm cell able to penetrate and then after that what happens <clears throat> this is the male gamete nucleus all right that's the male gamete nucleus and the male gamete nucleus will be uh, fusing with the female gamete nucleus and that is what you call as the fertilization process so you already have a zygote formed okay the zygote is already formed so this is the zygote okay they have the diploid nucleus already all right the diploid nucleus already okay and then what happens the zygote will go through mitosis process to produce two cell embryo 
okay this is already embryogenesis you need to understand how the embryo are being formed okay so zygote will become a uh, two cell when they go through mitosis process the two cell embryo will go through mitosis to form four cells the four cells um, embryo will go through mitosis to produce eight cell and the eight cell will go through mitosis process to produce 16 cell the 16 cell is known as the morula okay and then it will go through further mitosis process many times until it reaches a stage which is known as the blastocyst okay so this is spm don't worry you actually you have more which is morula blastomere and then it becomes blastocyst but you just remember this way you got morula 16 cell and then after that it goes through several several time mitosis until it reaches a desired number of cells in the embryo which it turns into a structure which is known as the blastocyst okay now this blastocyst is the one okay let's look at this one here okay let's look at this here okay this is the blastocyst blastocyst by the time the fallopian tube which is uh, consists of cilia okay if you look at the fallopian tube here they have cilia all right they have cilia okay they have fine cilia which helps the uh, embryo to be pushed to the uterus okay it will be pushed but this is a slow process it takes weeks all right and then you can see that the once the blastocyst is already ready and they are here at the uterus they will go through implantation process they will bump to one of the endometrium tissue and there you go process penimpelan okay in bahasa melayu and uh, in english we call that as implantation process happens and that's it the endometrium tissue will now take care of the embryo the tissue is filled with large network of blood capillary so they will provide food you know nutrients water oxygen for the embryo to grow further all right into fetus now this is the fetus after the embryo it grows into fetus and this is pregnancy okay i'm not i'm not going to go through very detail now okay i will go through in another video on uh, pregnancy process okay which involves a different kind of hormone and uh, which helps in the development of the fetus and so on so please remember i just want to finish up with this okay you got the fetus ever growing from the embryo it takes weeks and weeks and weeks okay and the fetus will be protected within a bag which is known as the amniotic bag you guys know this already and inside the amniotic bag you guys have this amniotic fluid okay all right the amniotic fluid and the amniotic bag is actually to protect the fetus from any kind of mechanical damage when the mom bumps into something because her tummy is so big and she will bump into something you know and uh, so you, they don't want the shock to uh, get to the fetus so the fluid and the back will absorb most of the shock and also it pro provides a suitable environment for the fetus to grow okay with the right uh, temperature with the right ph and the right uh, humidity and uh, blah 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 and the fetus will be connected with the mother using a umbilical cord this is the umbilical cord here and the uh, mother is connected to the fetus using this placenta how to how does she get the placenta she gets the placenta from the endometrium tissue which it will develop into placenta okay placenta is where okay this is the placenta okay this is the placenta okay inside the placenta they have large network of blood capillary belonging to the fetus and the mother which this uh, uh, what you call this uh, both the blood capillaries of the fetus and the mother will not be mixing there is a barrier created in between the mother's and the fetus blood capillaries all right so this is the umbilical cord all right this is the umbilical cord the umbilical cord here uh, they have two v vessels okay which is number one is the umbilical artery okay they actually have two umbilical artery which carries the carbon dioxide urea all the unnecessary product produced by the fetus okay the excretory product produced by the fetus will be transported to the placenta using the umbilical artery now once inside the placenta all the carbon dioxide urea unwanted things will diffuse from the fetus blood capillary to the mother's blood capillary okay and then the mother will be providing oxygen car, uh, 
uh, nutrients vitamin minerals ions and they will be also providing the antibodies which is to protect the fetus all that will be transferred from the mother's blood capillary to the fetus blood capillary and umbilical vein here umbilical umbilical vein this is the umbilical vein which is carrying oxygenated blood nutrient antibodies from the placenta to the fetus okay so this is the how the fetus grows and with the help of the mother and this process goes on for 10 months and that is that is quite long okay elephant goes to uh, go, goes through two years of pregnancy uh, that's that's quite interesting isn't it okay so different mammals has different timeline of pregnancy anyway this is how much that you guys will need to know uh, for from the female reproductive system to male reproductive system up to the beginning part of the pregnancy I will go through again about the pregnancy alone and uh, problems related to the female reproductive system and the male reproductive system when it comes to you know fertility and infertility and uh, yeah and growth we will look into that okay in another video okay so i have spent 56 minutes explaining to you guys about human reproductive system okay so i hope that you guys will uh, uh do your best for this uh spm examination okay and i hope that all this uh information that i have given to you uh helps you a lot okay all right so that's all for this video students please watch it again as many times as you guys can to make the facts and information firmer in your brain cells yeah <laughs> uh, if you need more assistance you guys can call me at 017-402-1601 for online lesson okay my name is mr sun your bio coach if you like my video hit the like button and please do subscribe my channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon to receive more updates videos uh, on biology spm the brand new kssm syllabus adios amigo i'm mr san your bio coach